Section two, where we're going to talk about the reciprocal function family. Um, this this unit, this chapter, this section, sorry, is going to seem a lot like re review of things that we've done over and over and over again. Because what we're going to look at is we're going to look at this reciprocal function family, and the graphs of them, and how to transform them. So we're going to deal with a, h, and k, which we've been doing the entire year. So hopefully, uh, we're starting to get good at it and starting to understand uh, how to how to move these graphs around and look at them differently. So we just worked with inverse functions, um, which give us this, you know, this, this kind of curvy downward, uh, you know, who's a what's it like that, um, who's a what's it. Um, and so what these are is these, these are called reciprocal functions, okay? So reciprocal functions come in this form here of f of x equals 1 over x, and big deal, x can't be 0, okay? Um, so what we're going to look at is how to transform them. Uh, the general form, this is the part that should look familiar, is y equals a over x minus h plus k, where x and h aren't the same, because if they were, that would be 0, and that would be bad. Um, inverse variation functions are just y equals a over x, um, and those are stretches or shrinks or reflections of the parent reciprocal function depending on the value of a. So the parent reciprocal function is just this, y equals 1 over x, and that's what we have right here. Um, it's, it's really easy to graph because you just pick some numbers, uh, positive and negative, and, and we're going to have to pick more positive and negative now um, to get good pictures. Um, so, you know, we had been using negative 2, uh, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Probably need to add a couple here, um, negative 3 and negative 4, and maybe 3 and 4, and maybe even some fractions, sometimes, uh, you know, 1 half or negative 1 half, um, to give ourselves a good look at what this looks like. <coughs> so that's, that's the parent function, all right? Um, so how to graph an inverse variation? Really, you know, the easiest way is just you make a table, um, you can put it into your calculator and let your, calculate, cal let your calculator make the table. That's fine. Um, but you make a table, and you'll notice here, I mean, there's, there's 12 points uh, that, the, that the book used in order to get a good idea of what this graph looks like. There are some things to notice. Um, you want to notice uh, that the y values get closer to zero as the absolute value of x gets larger. Um, the, the absolute values of y get very large as x approaches zero. So just some things to notice. Um, so we graph the points. Step three. So uh, step three, we connect the points with a smooth curve. Um, x can't be zero, so there's no y-intercept. Uh, the numerator is never zero, so y is never zero. There is no x-intercept. The x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. The y-axis is a horizontal asymptote. Um, knowing the asymptotes gives you a really good idea of where the graph is and what it looks like, so that's important. The domain is all set of real numbers, except for x can't be zero, and the range is all set of real numbers, except for y can't be zero. And that's specifically for the parent function. Those, those numbers can change, all right? So, got it, 1a. What is the graph of 12 over x? Uh, and the x, identify the x and y intercepts, uh, and the asymptotes of the graph also state the domain and range. And then, would the function of y equals uh, 6 over x have the same domain and range as 8 over x and 12 over x explained? Go ahead and take a second and answer those questions. Your graph for 1a, guys, is just a sketch is fine. Go ahead and pause the video here and answer those questions. Okay, you've unpaused. Hopefully, you know, your graph is going to look something like this, obviously. This is just a god-awful sketch. Whoa, uh, that's not very good. Um, it's going to look something like this. The numbers that are important, important are obviously, you know, 1, 12. Uh, that, should be a num that should be a point. Uh, when we go to 2, it should be 6. Um, so as long as you have, you know, some basic idea of what the graph would look like, obviously out here at 12, that would be one. Obviously, my graph is terrible. Um, but some sort of sketch so that it looks like that, and then obviously the negatives. Uh, the x and y intercepts, <coughs> there are none. Okay? There are none. No x or y intercepts. Um, Let's see, what else did we have? We had to do the uh, the asymptotes, uh, y equals 0 and x equals 0. Uh, 
So the two axes, y equals 0 and x equals 0, that's the x-axis and that's the y-axis. And then the domain, uh, the domain is x is an element of the reals such that x is not equal to 0. And the range is y is an element of the reals such that y is not equal to 0. That's the domain and range. Okay. Uh, the answer to B uh, is a yes. Okay, it's very simply just a yes. Um, they they would have similar. They're similar graphs. The only thing that's different is the the points, uh, but all the other stuff is going to be the same. All right. Um, each part of the graph of a reciprocal function is called a branch. So when we talk about these, we'll call them branches. The branches of the parent function uh, y equals one over x are in quadrants one and three. Stretches and compressions of the parent function remain in those quadrants, but then when we reflect it with a negative sign, um, we can we can move them to quadrants two and four. So let's take a look at that. Um, whoa, hold on one second. All better now. Um, all right. So identifying reciprocal function transformations. So let's let's just take a look for each given value of a. Um, How do the graphs of y equals 1 over x uh, and y equals a over x compare? So we're just comparing um, these three right here, if it's 6, 0 0.25 and negative 6, to the parent function. And so really, just simply, the, the graph in red, um, that's y equals 6 over x, is a stretch. It's a stretch of 6. Uh, the graph in blue is a shrink or compression of 1 fourth. And the graph of uh, y equals negative 6 over x um, right here is is a reflection in the x-axis okay um, it's also a stretch of six but it's been reflected so now those that's if we're looking at quadrants there's one two three and four so that one appears in quadrants one and four okay uh, this so so the a value is what's up top and this is simply uh, stretch or compress and then reflection so these too far these shouldn't be that hard. Go ahead and take a second and answer, uh, got it number two. What's the difference? Uh, how does it affect the graph okay, of the parent function? Go ahead and tell me what's happening in each one of those. Pause the video and try that right now. Okay. Um, so if we make A right here, this is what we're looking at. If we make A one half, all right, so if this is... Uh, making sure we're clear. This is y equals 1 over x, and now a is, you know, instead of a, we have 1. So this is y equals 1 over 2x. This is y equals uh, 2 over x. This is y equals negative 1 over 2x. Okay? Um, that's a really bad y. Um, so uh, part a, this is a shrink or a compression by 1 half. This is a stretch of 2. And this obviously is a reflection and a shrink or compression by one half. Okay, so the the number up top, um, or in this case, it's a one half. Uh, so that's that is the a value. Uh, big key here. This is the you know the reciprocal function family. This is what we've done every single graph we've looked at. So if a is greater than one. Um, it's a stretch. If it's between zero and one, if it's a fraction or a decimal, it's it's a compression or a shrink. And if it's negative, it's a reflection. Uh, H will appear on the bottom. And again, if it's a negative, it goes to the left. If it's positive, it goes to the right. And then K is vertical, up and down. Okay. And then so everything all together is right here. All right. So let's look at what that does. Um, when we graph a translated reciprocal function, the good first step is to draw the asymptotes. So let's find the asymptotes. It's a really good first step. It's the best thing you can do, okay, is to get the asymptotes on there, and then from there, we got some simple stuff. So if we draw the asymptotes, which are the dotted lines in red on this picture, the asymptotes are at negative 1 and negative 2. Negative 1 because it's the opposite of this, and negative 2 because that. So it's been shifted left 1 and down 2. Okay, so this is sort of like our new origin. So the asymptotes go through there. Then we look at the numerator and look what that is. Well, that's 1 over x. So all I do is I take these points like 1, 1 and negative 1, negative 1, and I translate them two units down and one unit to the left, and then I have new points. So instead of 1, 1, I go two units down and one unit to the left, and I get my 
I, I get my new points, okay? Um, so instead of being here, obviously we went two down, one left. And so that's what's happening with each point. So if one, one was a point, I would go down two points and one unit to the left. And then there, are, this graph is sort of tough to see because this is counting by twos, but hopefully you get the big picture main idea. All right, uh, take a second. If you can, please, let's graph uh, got it number three. Go ahead and pause the video here and graph this as best as you can. All right, well, you've unpaused, and let me let me show you what I got. Um, I'll, I'll give you a graph. My curves are really not very good, but it's hard to draw them with this silly tool. So uh, first thing I did was I, I drew my, my asymptote, so x minus 4 shifts it to the right 4, so there's that one, and plus 6, so I go up 6, and so there's my horizontal asymptote. And then from here, I, it's almost like I use this as my new origin, and so then I'm just... Uh, the a value is 1. So now I'm just thinking about y equals 1 over x. And so what I did was, um, if x is 1, y is 1. So from my sort of new origin, so to speak, I, I put a point at 1, 1, and then at negative 1, negative 1. And then if x is 2, y is 1 half, so I put a point there. If x is 1 half, y is 2, I put a point there. And then I did the same thing for the negatives, and then I had enough that I could draw a line with the understanding that these asymptotes exist. Not really complicated. Um, just sort of, you know, a step-by-step, got to look at it the right way kind of process. Let's get this out of the way. All right, so now what if we wanted to write the equation of a transformation given, um, given the graph? So let's take a look here. Um, we have this. This is a multiple choice one, so they start you off kind of easy. Um, here's a graph. Um, and it says that this graph of a function is a translation of the graph of y equals 2 over x. So they tell you that 2 is on top. So we just got to figure out, well, what's the shift? Well, it looks like it's left, and again, they're counting by 2s. So that's left 3 and up 4. So left 3 and up 4 would be this one right here. There's the, my left 3. There's my up 4. So that's why A is my answer for that one, okay? The guy that they give you is a little bit harder because they want you to, um, it's not multiple choice. They, they tell you that there's a two on top. They just want to know the shift. Go ahead and pause the video right here and give me that one. All right, you're back. Hopefully what you got is y equals 2 over x minus 1 minus 4, okay? Because uh, it's 1 to the right and 4 down. Word problems, yay. Um, so here's how we would use this in a word problem. And obviously we're not going to use both sides. It's sort of going to depend on what kind of the word problem we're talking about um, as to which side we use. But here we're talking about money and people. So we're only going to use quadrant one. It's the only part of the rational fraction or rational function that we need. Um, but we have a, the rowing club is renting a 57 passenger bus for a day trip. Cost of the bus is 750. Five of the passengers will be chaperones. Um, if the students who attend share the bus cost equally, what function models the cost per student with respect to the number of students who attend? What is the domain? How many students uh, do we have to get on the bus to keep the cost um, $20 or less? So to share the cost equally, we're going to divide 750 by the number of students. So 750 divided by N and C is cost. So far, so good. Now, the bus has a capacity of 57, but five of them are going to be chaperones, so the maximum number of students is 52, okay? The domain becomes integers from 1 to 52 because we can't take half of a student because if you're in a buddy system and you only have half a buddy, like, what if you get lost? Um, you have to, it's, it'd just be a disaster, that and the cutting students in half part. So, uh, we here, we use our graphing calculator pretty simply. Uh, we put in... We need 750 over n to be less than or equal to 20. Um, so the easiest way to do that is you graph 750 over x, you graph 20, you look at where they intersect. So when you look at that picture, um, basically once you get above 38 people, um, because here's where 38 is, uh, the cost will be less than $20. So that's the magic number, okay? Um, Got to get to 38, and obviously if we get all the way to 52, it gets even cheaper, but to keep it under $20, we need 38. This is really real-world stuff. When you guys go on field trips in your classes and teachers plan out stuff like that, they're thinking about this kind of stuff. Go ahead and take a second, read this about what the junior class is trying to do for laser tag, which, by the way, sounds like a really good time. If anybody's interested, we should organize that. Um, so here's the cost for the facility is 1,200. We need 13 chaperones. The capacity is 325. Let's figure out what to do to keep the cost under 750. Okay, how many people have to go to keep it under 750? Um, what's the domain? 
uh, get the function model. And then what happens if we want to give away 30 spots in a drawing? How does that change the numbers? Okay, go ahead and take a second and try 5A and 5B. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so let's see. Um, here's, uh, let's see, our function is going to be C equals 1200 over N. That part's pretty straightforward. Um, whole numbers 1 through 312, that's because of this 325 minus 13 here. And then what we have is we put this in our graphing calculator, we'll put this in our graphing calculator, and hopefully you got 160 students. Uh, the big difference for part B, um, let's get rid of that, is that now we have this minus 30 on the bottom, changes the domain to 200, uh, 282. We still are just putting in our graphing calculator, we put, we put uh, this as one, and that still is the other, and it changes our result here. We need 190 students to keep the cost down. And that's it, guys. Uh, please do me a favor, share the video, help your classmates, tweet it, like it on YouTube, whatever. We, we need more people watching this stuff. It's not easy. Um, it's new completely. You've never done anything like it. Um, so we need all you guys to be prepared for class. I will see you next time. Bye.